Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. We are your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Oshamut Zeta Pinkavichin. We've been mastering secrets of organ playing for more than 20 years and sharing them on this blog since 2011. On this show, which we create from our home in Vilnius, Lithuania, we strive to help you grow in every area of organ playing, including practice, technique, repertoire, sight reading, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, harmony, and many others. Our hope is to help you become a complete musician, or what we call a total organist, a program which we have created to help you reach your dreams faster than you would do on your own. If you are new here, we invite you to subscribe to receive free updates of this blog at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video on how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini course. And now let's go to the podcast for today. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Tavusha. Let's start episode 331 of Secrets of Organ Playing Podcast. This question was sent by Lev. And he writes, Hello Vidas, could you please, if you find time, to take a look at my suggestions for progression in C major and A minor uh, from Harmony for Organist course exercise 9-2. Uh, this is uh, tonic, tonic, subdominant, subdominant, dominant, dominant, tonic, tonic. And give me short feedback about mistakes. I'd like to make sure I've understood the harmony stuff correctly so far. And um, I'm attaching the scanned file. Thanks in, adva- in advance and best regards. Uh, Osher and myself, we just a moment ago looked at this file and we were actually very impressed, right? Because we didn't see almost any mistakes. Yes, we could not find any, except from orthography. When you put slurs in the tenor voice, uh, we need to look up. Uh, if the if the stem goes up, then the slur or tie has to go from above too. If the sl- if the stem goes uh, downward, faces downward, like in the alto voice or, or in the bass voice, then uh, the note uh, slur also needs to go from below. Right? But uh, otherwise, though, all the voice leading is correct. Mm-hmm. This is really nice. The assignment was to harmonize in four parts. Uh, progression of three... Chords basically tonic, subdominant, dominant, and again tonic, but make uh, make uh, tonic sound twice, subdominant sound twice, dominant sound twice, and uh, tonic again uh, sound twice, but not repeated, but in different melodic positions. So that's we what we were talking about in harmony chords so far. And Lev uh, seems to understand the subject very well. Yes, that looks like that. Do you have these exercises in your harmony class, Sosha? Similar ones? Yes, I have this one, this exercise. Uh, I believe it's taken from my course that I'm teaching. You mean stolen? Yes, never mind that. It's no general knowledge. It's actually suited for beginners. Uh-huh. Once people know how to put one chord correctly, how to connect two chords correctly, and then how to repeat the same chord in a different melodic position, uh, then they could make a longer phrase out of 
four or six or seven or eight even chords and starting from different uh, melodic positions for example in C major you could start from the note C in the soprano E in the soprano or G in the soprano and you could also do closed position chords or open position chords so in C major there could be like six versions right that's right and then the same thing in A minor also one third below uh, what about your students also at school do they uh, do do they make mistakes on this kind of exercise well some some do and some do not mm -hmm. so it's different of, the, of those who do make mistakes, um, what what do they lack? What kind of knowledge do they lack or skills? <laughs> I think we are probably too lazy, some of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't want to apply the rules, and that's the problem. Don't want to follow the rules? Yes. Mm -hmm. They're artists, right? Well... Like myself. They imagine themselves that we are artists. Ah, I also don't follow the rules. I wouldn't call them artists. Would you call me artist? Yes, but you know how to do this kind of exercise, <laughs> so don't compare yourself, you know, with my, with my, you know, students. Right. Um, Who are like 16, 17, 18 years old. Do you remember... My harmony exercises from school, like 20 or 30 years ago. Yes, I remember. I, I did show it, them to you, right? Yes. What did you think about the, them? I thought that, you know, you are better at writing musical dictations oh, than so, harmonizing. So I had better musical pitch That's right. than, than head. That's right. That's what I thought. Then brain. What about your... Do you remember what was your experience when you were in school? Well, let's face it. You know, I finished the school which is much, much better than yours. So the requirements in our school were much higher than in yours. Why would you say that? Well, <laughs> because that's the truth. Is it? Are it you is. sure? Yes, I am definitely sure. Take it back. No, I will not. <laughs> okay, I feel so sad. I think I, I'm going to cry, but maybe I will continue teaching people uh, today too. Uh, I'll cry after the podcast. Okay, remind me to cry. Okay, I will. Um, so, Lev is doing a great job, I think, with harmony. Uh, I wonder if he plays them while, after he writes them, if he plays them because it's really beneficial, right? Yes, it is. Sometimes I think that we, you know, spend too much time on writing down things and not enough of practicing them mm -hmm. on the keyboard. Because uh, the main skill that we are trying to develop is practical, true, right? not true. theoretical knowledge. So you need, of course, to do written exercises because if you start right away doing them on the keyboard, it might be too hard. And then you might make, you know, voice leading mistakes and do a slap job. But after, you know, writing them down for a while, you really need to go and practice them on the keyboard mm -hmm. in various keys. Right. Not only C major and A minor. Uh, the exercise for him in harmony for organists level one was in C major and A minor because just on that week we have those pairs of keys. In school, Osha, do you also assign paired tonalities? Usually, yes. Mm -hmm. Because it would be too much That's right. to do everything. Only crazy people could uh, practice everything. But for example, this uh, this kind of exercise, you know, I don't give them to do it, you know, as a written assignment. Mm -hmm. 
I give my students to play it mm -hmm. on the piano from any position in a given key. And then we have also, you know, to to sing it too. Oh, that's a different subject. Yes. In which class do they have to sing it? In solfeggio. Air training? Yes, air training. I think solfeggio is a you know term which even Americans should know. Mm -hmm. It's sort of you know international. Solfeggio with two G's. Yes, it mm -hmm. comes from the French. Word. Or Italian. I think from the French. We might check on it, but. Solfege. Mm -hmm. Right. Solfeggio. Uh, if solfeggio, then it's Italian. If solfege is, then then it's French. Yes. And uh, because you know, air training is not well, not a term that I really like because it doesn't describe so well what we are doing in the class. Because in air training courses, you call it. Uh, in our school, first comes you know, the ability to sight read things, to sync things from you know, from the score. Mm -hmm. And why we call it solvage? Mm, because we, we use uh, syllables, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. And of course, we do other stuff as well. So mm -hmm. I prefer solfege, not air training term. Right, it's kind of international. Um, is talking about A minor or any minor keys. What are some um, challenges that uh, people should overcome when harmonizing these progressions? Well, of course, if you are in a minor key, you need to raise the seventh skill degree when harmonizing dominant chords. Why? Because dominant is major in both major and minor keys. Why? Always ask this question, Osha, and then you get to the bottom of things. Why? That's a tradition that you need to carry on. Maybe it's a stupid tradition, you know, somebody started and we are living in 21st century and this tradition came from the 17th century. Why should we follow the, you know, 6th or 5th centuries tradition? Maybe we should do whatever we want. Yes, you can do that. I don't mind. Would it sound good? No. Why? Well, because when you could not resolve it, you know, to tonic. Why do we have to resolve everything to tonic? That's how music works. You have consonances and you have dissonances. Hmm. And you are building tension and releasing it. What if I don't want to release tension? Well... <laughs> or build tension, I well, just Well, if to... you compose music without releasing tension, I think your listeners will run off the church after you know hearing you for 10 minutes probably mm -hmm. maybe that would be a good thing they would run and get exercise it depends on what your goal is <laughs> get people into fresh air true <laughs> uh, what about if I don't want to build up uh, tension and just want to play things calmly, cal calmly? So, without 7th scale degree raised? Well, you could do that, but then, you know, the, you wouldn't get a dominant chord. You could not call, you know, uh, this chord in a minor key E, G, B, yes? If you wouldn't have the G sharp, you could not call it a dominant key. Mm -hmm. Then it would have another function. It would be more like a subdominant chord. So that's another story. Wow. But then people would not run, run out of the church. But maybe we fall asleep. Oh, sleep is also good. True. Uh, we get more refreshed after sleep too. Okay, guys, uh, this conversation uh, is going to the silly direction now. And I hope... Uh, 
you you got some entertainment so please keep sending uh, your questions to us we love helping you grow and remember when you practice miracles happen this blog is supported by total organist the most comprehensive organ training program online where you will find courses for every area of organ playing, including technique, practice, sight reading, repertoire playing, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory and harmony, with hundreds of scores and thousands of exercises. Here is what some of the students are saying. Hugh writes, the sight reading course has helped me tremendously. Thank you very much for your SS courses and all your help. Robert writes, I found the fingerings, registration ideas and general comments to be excellent. John writes, I have found your download very helpful. It was really excellent. I have watched some of your teaching videos and when I read your instructions. I try to imagine you are there teaching me. You may feel disappointed that I am two three days behind, but I am a slow learner and I have committed to taking the time to get it right as you say. But the other night my wife commented that she had never heard me play such a detailed melody in the left hand so well. My left hand is generally poor. Robert writes, It has been a great pleasure in my life of having discovered your courses and material as well as the YouTube work of recordings. You have a calm and pleasant way of teaching. Ron writes, Hi Vida Santosha, thank you guys. What a wonderful response to my email note to you. You've got me right, and I feel you understand my level of playing. Yes, at home and lucky that I have an organ for that reason. I am paying attention to this, and I am going to try this haha no longer secret model. Yes, and I love Caesar Frank too. What is very nice about your blog podcast is that Osha and Vidas are like a Socratic dialogue, and by bouncing things off of each other, so much more information comes out and is expressed. Your comments contain a wealth of information and understanding. I really appreciate this. It is very inspiring and will keep us moving forward. Would you like to receive the same or even better results that our students are getting? If so, join them at organduo.lt slash total dash organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to receive free updates of this blog, make sure you do that at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video, how to master any organ composition and... 10-day organ playing mini course. This was Vidas and Osha from Secrets of Organ Playing. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen.